DeFi, decentralized finance. In 2020, hackers stole $120 million through these decentralized finance platforms. Now, uh, that seems pretty bad, but in the first six months of 2021, hackers have stolen $450 million worth of assets. That's why in this video, we're gonna go over what is DeFi, what you should know before investing in DeFi, who is investing in DeFi and why, how to invest in DeFi tokens, the future of DeFi, how you can make money with DeFi, and how does it compare with CeFi. I know that's a lot. Here are time codes if you want to jump to any of these different parts because uh, it might be a lot of content and it's probably gonna be boring. So please help me out by hitting the like button now uh, before you make any of those jumps. What should you know before investing in DeFi? First off, DeFi can be very dangerous. As you've seen, $450 million worth of assets has been stolen in the first half of 2021. That's because there are vulnerabilities in these smart contracts and you are relying on a smart contract to be perfect. Now, they are doing very complicated things as prices get updated and they work with different platforms. Uh, it's just, it can get very messy and even though code is audited, it doesn't mean it's perfect. Everyone is learning. So I would say DeFi is still in its beta stages as people are finding these bugs, stealing this money, and then the platform is finding ways to fix that. In my opinion, DeFi sounds awesome. Uh, for now, I am not going to be putting my money on a DeFi platform, but I would be holding DeFi tokens. From this recent 30 k security webinar on DeFi, uh, it's on the Binance channel if you want to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. They go over the four ways of how these hacks typically happen. Admin key compromise, that's when the admin for the contract just has their keys on MetaMask and that's a hot wallet connected to the internet and they'd be susceptible to either phishing attacks or malicious software. And to prevent that, they would have to use a multi-signature wallet to pr approve any transaction. So uh, they could set something up where five devs have the private keys and it requires three out of five of those devs to unlock a wallet to process a transaction. Uh, then there's coding mistakes, as I went over earlier. Yes, it's really easy to make a mistake. Uh, just one line of code and you can get wrecked. Flash loan and price manipulation. So flash loans are a feature and it is a little complicated and we can jump into that a little later. Misuse of third party protocols and business logic errors. Basically, these smart contracts are referencing other things in the DeFi space, and if they are trying to substitute one thing for another, or if something on another platform gets updated, that could mess up the code in the existing smart contract, and hackers will take advantage of that. Fees. There are a lot of fees on DeFi platforms. You have to pay the gas fee when you are interacting with these smart contracts, and sometimes if you are trading, there could be a high spread up to 3%, 5%, 10%. That's the slippage. You would be paying a premium for coins that you could buy uh, on an exchange for much less. Well, depending on what you're trying to buy. If you're trying to be an early investor, it's always hard to find the liquidity or jump in early enough. And if you are an early investor in a token, you are taking a lot of risk. And back to, back to fees on DeFi versus CeFi, on centralized finance, on exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, KuCoin, those are very predictable. You can see how much liquidity they have. You can set your prices. Decentralized exchanges have these options too for some of them, but there isn't a lot of liquidity, which means you would be paying a higher price than you would on a centralized exchange. Plus the gas fees each time. If you are trading within a centralized exchange you're only paying the trading fee like all your coins are there and you are trading coins against other coins that are already on that exchange limit your risk i know a lot of people say invest what you can afford to lose they're serious about that there are a lot of hacks in DeFi, and there are a lot of cloned projects if you're investing in one of the newer DeFi platforms or even something that seems established there's no guarantee that 
there isn't some type of vulnerability in the code, and then you put your money at risk. So only invest what you can afford to lose as DeFi becomes better. Hopefully uh, you can invest more of that money, but at this time, I don't recommend going all in. You can hold the tokens, that's great. But if you are a liquidity provider or you're locking up tokens with that platform, then there is some risk. How to invest in DeFi tokens? Well, easy place to get started, CoinMarketCap. You go to CoinMarketCap and you go to this section here called DeFi. This will list out all the current DeFi projects and it will be ordered by market cap. So as you know, by market cap, that's how you can tell the true value of a token or coin and it's not the price. You can see a huge difference in price here, but the market cap will tell you how much money is in the project. Quick explanation of some of these coins. Wrapped Bitcoin is just Bitcoin that you can trade on Ethereum. DAI is pegged against the US dollar, so it just makes things easier to trade and understand the value as you're uh, moving assets around. Now, some of these exchanges are more popular than others, and to find out which one is the most popular, just go to DAP Radar. So here we are in DAP Radar, and then we can go to DeFi, close this pop-up, and it says the top DeFi projects here. It will list their market cap, their total value locked, that's how much money people have locked up with them as they're investing, and you can also find out some other interesting statistics here. Now, as you research all these different DeFi apps, you should know that DeFi is just the overall name for this category of coins for decentralized finance. And you should be very skeptical of any coin named DeFi because it might be misleading you. So this is the top coins in coin market cap that are DeFi tokens. So if we look up DeFi, uh, down here 211 DeFi chain, that gets questionable. But then if we go to the search and type in DeFi, you're gonna see about 100 tokens named DeFi. These are very likely projects you should not invest in, so do not be fooled by a name. A lot of coins like to jump on different trends and mislead investors. Your best bet is to stick with the bigger projects because there's a reason why they are a big project. There's a lot of backers, there's a lot of developers, they've worked out a lot of the bugs. And that's because DeFi is very dangerous and you could easily lose your money. Now, a lot of these other codes, uh, a lot of these other projects could be clones of existing projects. So you really have to be careful with what you're investing in and you have to limit how much you are investing in. Why are people using DeFi? Uh, it, basically, it's a great way to earn money and loan out your coins. So you're earning extra interest for tokens you're holding already. Now there are centralized finance, CeFi solutions to that, and I support that more because I trust it more at the moment as we are still working the bugs out of DeFi. Now with DeFi, it's really easy to trade tokens on a swapping platform like SushiSwap, Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and if you are a new token, it's really easy to list there. Whereas on CeFi, centralized finance, you'd have to go to a crypto exchange You'd have to pay them money to list your token and it's more difficult for a small coin project to get started. It's a lot easier on DeFi. Now also on DeFi it's decentralized. No one is uh, going to help you out. Uh, there's no customer support. You have to be ready for the losses and you have to know what you're doing. And But with that there's also no tax reporting. Uh, yeah you kind of have to report your taxes yourself. And if you don't, probably nothing will happen because no one's tracking this. It's just uh, all your funds from your, directly from your wallet. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful is also investing in DeFi. The details are a little unclear about what he plans to do in DeFi, but he wants people to be able to earn interest on their tokens where it's four, five, or 6% on it. So it's a pretty limited yield. You can already get that yield on a lot of different tokens. I've only listed the main ones, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins like USDT, USDC. And you can do that with BlockFi, Celsius Network, Nexo, or Voyager. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check these out because I also did reviews on them and some of them give you a sign-up bonus. 
Now, it is interesting that Kevin O'Leary is going to be jumping into DeFi and he wants to be heading out his own project. And he's not the first one to do this. There's already existing DeFi projects that promise a yield on your investment. And those projects offer a lot more, but with DeFi, it also comes with high risk. Let me know in the comments what DeFi project you are investing in and why. Maybe I'll take a look at it. If it's like undervalued, could make a video about it. And uh, yeah, just get the comments going. How to make money in DeFi. So there are a lot of DeFi platforms where you can make money off your tokens. All you have to do is provide your tokens, you lend it to the platform and they pay you interest. So these are the rates we see for Aave and uh, they are pretty low when compared to centralized finance for the most part. That's the deposit APY. In the event you wanted to borrow coins, these would be the interest rates to take out a loan. Same thing for Compound. This is the supply APY, how much you will get in interest if you provide your tokens to the platform. Borrow APY, that's how much it would cost to take a loan out in that specific coin. Now with uh, yield farming and farming uh, other tokens, that's when you provide uh, an equivalent value of two different tokens. So here we have 658% interest. You would have to provide the same amount of BNB to belt in USD value. So you would need $100 of BNB and $100 of belts. So then you provide it to the um, DeFi platform, you'll be a liquidity provider and you'll be earning interest as people trade along that. Now, 658% is a lot. You are putting uh, a lot of, uh, you are taking on a lot of risk. Anytime you have an interest rate that high on a token that isn't popular, you are going to run into a lot of risk. PancakeSwap, we see super high interest rates here, 763%, 464%. Uh, these are just very high. I would be, I would not, uh, even though the interest rate is very high, I would not be a liquidity provider for these tokens. I, I would probably try a little bit. I want to go all in. I want to depend on making that in the long run because uh, the liquidity on these swapping platforms is pretty low and you could be subject to price manipulation as your, to uh, as your tokens are locked up in there as a liquidity provider. So I just kind of avoid it. I know the interest rate is really appealing, but uh, I don't need to take that risk uh, and there, there is a lot of risk. So keep that in mind when using these platforms. You could definitely make a lot of uh, money this way, uh, theoretically, uh, but there, that risk that, yeah, I don't, I don't like losing money. I don't like taking unnecessary risk, but uh, that's up to you. If this has been helpful so far, please be sure to like the video. That helps me out. More people see this video and the channel grows. The channel has actually grown a lot. I appreciate that. And I'll do a weekly crypto tech support or just a weekly crypto chat. Uh, there'll be details in, uh, yeah, on the channel. And I'll schedule that, that out every week. If you have any questions, check out the description. There are going to be links to the how to research DeFi projects for CoinMarketCap, Dapp Radar, and the YouTube webinar for CertiK. Uh, also is the Airtable for the C5 platforms where you can earn interest on your cryptocurrency. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you got your full value for today.